And this one is called Circa Beauty. No, Circa Cosmetics. Three new products from the Walmart.com. Eyeshadow Trio. Really? Let's see that. Hey guys, this review and demo is featuring three new products from the Circa Cosmetics line that you've probably seen going in at your local Walgreens stores. I know as soon as these went up in my local store, I was sort of really interested in it because it just looked totally different from anything else in the store and of course as a makeup junkie new brands are really exciting. This of course is from Eva Mendez and it is her own personal uh, makeup line and she as a self-proclaimed drugstore makeup lover when she was growing up wanted to make her beauty line somewhere in the price range of drugstore brands. So it is a little bit more than a regular drugstore brand but really not that much more than something like Physicians Formula and I do think that the packaging and everything sort of puts it at a step above most of the stuff that you do see at the drugstore. I really like the design of it. I think it's just really sleek and sort of old Hollywood and you'll see in the close-ups here in a minute what I'm talking about but if you haven't seen this in your local stores or you don't have a Walgreens near you. It is also sold on drugstore.com and they do free shipping with a purchase of at least $35. So if you purchase like three products from this range, you'd be able to get free shipping most likely. So this range actually uh, starts at the, around the $7 price point and goes up to around $15. They have foundations and eyeshadows and eyeshadow trios and lipsticks and lip stains and mascaras and serums and I mean all kinds of different stuff so if you wanted to browse and sort of do your homework before you went into the store you can definitely look up all of these products on walgreens.com and drugstore.com to sort of do your homework and do your research a little bit I like to do that so that I don't feel overwhelmed when I go in the store because there's just so much to look at and it's sort of hard to tell you know what the colors are in the packaging and of course everything's sealed up so you can't really bust anything open to test it and they don't have testers there at least at my store they didn't she really wanted this range to be a high-end luxury type of of line that was available at the drugstore and I do think she really achieved that. I could see them really expanding this line to maybe some hair care products or some face care products just more so than they are now which is just mainly color and face products. The three things that I picked up were the lipstick which is $10, the eyeshadow trio which is $12, and then the mascara which is also at the $10 price point. So about $30 two dollars that I spent on all of this and I would say the products were you know good uh, I wasn't just blown away by anything yet I think maybe with the right colors uh, with the right formula I could get there and just to give you an idea of the price point of some of the other products the foundation is 15 the concealer is 12 single eyeshadows are 8 lip stains are 12 there's a really good price range there as far as what the products are and I don't think they're too expensive. They're just a little bit more than you might expect to find at your Walgreens store. I have not noticed these on sale. I don't know if it's going to be the sort of thing that just doesn't go on sale, but you might just keep your eyes peeled and if you have some type of reward that you could use, you might be able to get a few dollars off. So let's get into each one of the products. I'll describe them to you and then show you a demo here of the look that I'm wearing. This first product that I picked up is one of the Absolute Velvet Luxe lipsticks and this color is shade 4 Ava. Now this lipstick is available in 12 different shades and my Walgreens had all of them in stock, all of them on the display. So just depending on which store you're at, I'm sure you could find the shades. If not, you can look online. This is a really nice packaging. I feel like it looks sort of old Hollywood with the black and gold. It's a little bit bulky, you know, it's a little bit of a bigger lipstick, but I think it would be really pretty on your vanity, especially because I really like the logo here on the side. The inside has a really nice gold accent here and then of course your product just twists up like a normal lipstick. I also really like that on the bottom of the lipstick it has a color indicator so that if you do have it setting up in a drawer you can easily see either from the front or the bottom which color you're working with. This particular lipstick formula claims to be weightless, very comfortable to wear and it says on the Circa website that it is infused with jojoba and sweet almond oil which helps to keep your lips moist and smooth and this claims to be a semi long wearing lipstick not all day but a good uh, rich pigment that lasts for a really long time you'll of course see some more thoughts on this here in a little bit when I demo the product for you because I wanted to create sort of a full look for you guys in this video I went ahead and picked up an eyeshadow trio as well they have single eyeshadows but then they have six of these available which are three colors in a little compact here that matches of course the look of the lipstick that I showed before and this particular trio is called provocateur now this particular line of eyeshadow claims to be weightless true to color 
and on the website it says it's a pressed powder pigment and that you can use each of the colors, one to do highlighting, one to do lining, and one to do shading. It also claims that these have superior blendability, smooth and even application, and it even talks about the applicator that comes with the product, which I don't think is all that fantastic, but it does talk quite a bit about it on the website, talking about the dual end of it and the velvet finish of the little sponge tip applicator. You'll see me talk more about that here in a minute when I demo the product for you. Like I said, this is available in six different shades. And lastly, because I just can't pass up the chance to find a good mascara, I did pick up one of the mascaras from the line. Now, I do believe they have a couple of different mascara formulas. This is the one that sort of stuck out to me, and it is the Absolute Lash Icon Mascara in Extreme Black. I have the box here because I'm going to try to return it to Walgreens. You'll see in a minute when I demo the product that I'm not loving this for a couple of reasons and I'll show that to you here in just a minute. This is the packaging of the product. It's really pretty. I love how sleek it is and the gold and the black and all of that. It even has, you know, on the product it labels the name of the product and everything, which I think sometimes drugstore brands tend to not do that and it sort of irritates me. So I do think the packaging is really spot on for this particular line, but the product itself I'm not that crazy about. Here in the close-up you can see not only the packaging but also the size of the wand, which is going to be sort of what becomes an issue for me here in a minute. The claims online are that this mascara creates thicker, fuller, bolder, dramatic lashes. It says that this mascara promotes a false lash effect and has a fast drying formula. And then also that it is enriched with Pro Vitamin B5. And this B5 is supposed to help keep nourished, soft, and flexible lashes. And that you're supposed to be able to build this up without it getting clumpy. Now I have three coats on my lashes right now. I put two on in the demo and then before I filmed a little bit more, I went ahead and um, put a third coat on. I feel like you can build it up pretty well. They do not feel crunchy or hard. They do feel really nice and soft and flexible. It really doesn't flake. So I do think it's a good mascara formula. It's just the one that I'm not crazy about. So this product is going to be returned sadly but I do feel like they have some good things to choose from and there's a couple more things that I have my eye on so I might be picking up some more of those in place of this. So I'm going to start with this little trio that I picked up. The price on this was $12 and the color is called Provocateur and for the lipstick that I had already purchased I wanted to go ahead and get something that I felt like sort of went with that so I went with this one and it has like a cream color sort of a taupey color here and then a dark brown. So I figured I could create a lot of different looks with this if I really, you know, if it turned out that I really liked the shadow. So what I'm gonna do is start off with this cream color here. I'm gonna use sort of a flat brush to just apply that across my entire lid. And I did prime. I just, I always prime, so I put on my regular primer that I use every day. And I'm just sort of putting that all over the lid to highlight up under the brow bone, but also to give myself a little bit of a color to blend with, a nice base. First thing I'm gonna do is put this color all over my lid. Now I have tried this several different ways and uh, applying it with my fingertip works really well because of course that's gonna pack on the color. But as you'll see while I'm applying it here, it doesn't really show up that much. So usually what I'll do instead of just putting on the color like that, unless I'm not wanting much color at all, because honestly it just doesn't hardly even show up. I'll take my Mist and Fix from Makeup Forever and I'll spray my brush first. And I've only put the wet part of my brush in the bottom section of that color because it's not a pigment, it's actually an eyeshadow, so it will sort of leave a weird crust on the top of the eyeshadow. I'll use sort of a firmer brush. This is actually a concealer brush and I'll spray that fixative on the tip of my brush and then dip it into the eyeshadow. And you can see it gives it more of like a, a wet look, obviously because it is wet, but even when it dries it does give a little bit more pigment. I have to say I'm not that in awe of the eyeshadows. I think they're okay. I think wet and mild shadows are better. And those are super cheap. But I wanted to give this a try just to see. That is a cruelty free brand which is nice. And just something new at the drugstore that I thought looked interesting. The packaging is really pretty. So it has some things going for it. So you can see that really improved the pigmentation of the eyeshadow. And I'm gonna take a fluffy blending brush. And I'm going to go into the dry portion of that shadow and just sort of like blend out so there's not a harsh line from where I put the shadow on wet. 
and I'm gonna dip in the tiniest, tiniest bit to this dark color, just to give a tiny bit of definition to the crease. Like I'm just angel kissing it, tiny, <laughs> into that color, because I don't want much, because I am gonna put it a little bit darker along the lash line. So you can see that just gives it a little tiny, tiny bit of definition. I will say that these blend really well. They do have a nice texture. I think I just wanted more pigmentation from that sort of, you know, the, the color in this pan that's interesting is this one, and so I really wanted it to kind of pop more. I do like that it's nice and compact, and like I said, it's really pretty packaging, and you can see what colors they are in the front. So there's some, there's some good points. So what I'm gonna do now is take a black liquid liner and sort of give myself a little bit of a wing, nothing dramatic, and I'll be right back. So I went ahead and did a line and a little bit of a wing here with a different eyeliner. I didn't use the one from Circa. They do sell one, I just don't have it. So I'm gonna take this tiny little detail brush that I have here, and I'm actually gonna apply this dark brown color over that black line and kind of buff and smoke it out. So the black line will give me a nice base, but I don't want it to be such a harsh line. I do think of the three colors in the pan, this one is probably the best as far as being like the most pigmented. You can see I'm getting a little bit of fallout here and that's mainly because I'm like applying it and sort of rubbing it uh, with a stiffer brush. So I'm probably going to get a blending brush here in just a second. And then I'm going to take a little bit of extra and see how I'm just sort of piling it right in the corner there. Almost going up into the crease. So it'll create sort of a nice effect on the outside of the eye there. I'm going to go back to that blending brush that I used before and just sort of buff that and add a little bit more and just kind of build up that outer corner until I get it as dark as I want. Now you can still see the definition of the black liner, but it has been diffused a little bit by buffing that brown color over it. So that's just with the regular black liner and then that's with the brown sort of buffed over it. You can also do that with like a, just a brown pencil liner and then smudge that and then apply this over and that would give it even a more diffused look. And I do like applying it with this stiffer brush so I can really kind of pack it. I honestly think, especially with this, trio that you could really get this look with a lot of different eyeshadows. I don't think this specific one is that special and honestly all the trios like none of them just were in my opinion crazy interesting you know there were there was like a rosy colored one there was one that had sort of plummy tones to it that I thought looked nice but Nothing that I don't already have, let's just say that. But this would be nice for like travel, I guess, you know, if you were, if you traveled a lot and you just needed to take something, especially if you traveled for work and you just sort of needed to take something that was gonna be work appropriate and you just wanted it in one compact, you know, I don't think it would be a, a bad thing. I've got to like, <laughs> look at that. I've gotta fix that, I'll be right back. Okay, clean that up, whoa, holy fallout. And next, I'm going to go back in with that this little brush that I had wet earlier and use the middle shadow. I'm going to do that one more time. And just really get that into my inner corner here. Just to add a little bit of shimmer there. Yeah. Just to brighten up a wee bit. And I'm actually gonna use a tiny little brush that came in the palette and I'm gonna do a little bit of a mixture of these two colors and just lightly buff that along my lower lash line. So I'm sort of just going like a little here, a little there. Just to add a little bit of definition and smokiness. 
So I really wish companies would wisen up and just stop putting those into packages because you could save, I mean, that's a good half inch of space that you could save by just cutting that out. And look how much sleeker that looks without the little dinky brush in there. Drives me insane. Some companies had figured that out. Most of them have not. So companies, wisen up. People have brushes. Okay, so that's the eyes. Like I said, I've done a couple of different looks with this. I like this one because it's it's defined, but it's, I think, okay for daytime, too. It could definitely transition to nighttime. And you could do some simple, just, you know, two-color looks with this if you wanted. But I really think that dark brown adds a little bit of definition to the eye. Next up, I'm going to grab the mascara that I purchased. This is the Extreme Black in the Absolute Lash Icon Mascara. I don't love this mascara. I'm going to use it and show you how it works. I'm not a fan. I'm probably going to try to return it because it was $10.00 which I think is a fair price. I don't think it's bad and it does look very nice and sleek. Like I like the packaging, although it seems a little bit big to me, but it's really pretty. I mean, I think it's nice. It looks like an expensive mascara, but here, let me show you the issue with it. Holy shit. Do I have saucers for eyes? I mean, honestly, that is like the biggest damn brush I've ever seen. Let me compare it to something. This is my Essence Lash Princess mascara that I love so much. I mean, honestly, look at that. It's like twice the thickness of it. It's a really weird brush because it has that little ball on the end, which I don't, I don't know. I'm not a fan of that. I don't really see a purpose in it. It doesn't help me is what I'm getting at. It's very sloppy mascara and I don't like that. Especially because a lot of times I like to wear my mascara without having liner. And if it's really sloppy like this, I end up getting mascara like on my lid and it drives me bananas. So I'm gonna apply it for you guys, but definitely don't love it. I have to curl my lashes with this because I can't really get down in there and wiggle really well. So, I mean, I just don't get the gigantic mascara wand. Um, companies keep doing this and I'm like, I realize that different people have different size eyes, but we don't vary in size from a penny to a saucer. You know what I'm saying? Like we generally have a similar eye size, like everything's around the same size. So to have a mascara wand like this, I mean, I'm not a friggin' anime character. It's insane. So that's the first coat. I mean, you can definitely see there's some mascara there. It certainly looks better than my nude, naked eyelashes. I find this incredibly tricky to do along my bottom lashes. And if I use that little ball on the end and go back and forth, it just clumps on a whole bunch of product. and I don't like clumpy lashes. See right there? I got like a big clump of mascara and I was super careful. I don't know, maybe Eva Mendez has gigantic eyes. I, I mean, I've seen her before, but I've never noticed the size of her eyes, but this is certainly impractical. And I suppose, you know, if it were like this fan freaking tastic mascara that made me look like I had false lashes, I could sort of deal with the excessiveness of this wand size. But it really doesn't do much. I mean, bleh. eh, it's not that great. It can build up. So that's the second coat. And when I wore it, a couple of days ago, I didn't notice any flaking. So that's good. I guess if you had like amazing lashes and you really just needed to like quickly swipe on <laughs> a little color without really having to like get in there and wiggle and pull like you have to do when you don't have great lashes, then this would probably be fine for you. But the majority of us have to really work with our mascara to get sort of effect we're looking for. And this mascara just, it ain't wanting to work with you. So bottom lash line is just like a freaking joke when you try to do this. So not the biggest fan of this. Um, gotta try things out for yourself to see if you like it, but all in all, 
Now out of the three products I did purchase, my favorite is the lipstick. I think it's a really nice lipstick. The color that I got I think is really unique. I don't have anything like it, which is sort of hard to do when you have a lot of makeup. You tend to, at least for me, I tend to gravitate toward the same colors a lot of the time. So I tried to get something that was different and this color is called Ava. And it's a really pretty sort of cooler rose color, if that makes sense. Usually roses are warmer but I feel like this one has just a little bit of coolness in it. And so on my skin, it doesn't turn too orangey because a lot of times with rose colored lipsticks, they can turn sort of orangey on me. This one does not do that. So I would really recommend these lipsticks. I think the texture is really nice. They don't last forever, but I'm okay with that. I don't mind reapplying. So I'm just gonna show you what it looks like applied straight from the bullet with no lip liner or anything. So it has a really nice texture. It's not shiny, but it's not matte. It's sort of just a nice kind of like cream satin finish. I'm not sure if some of them do have shimmer or anything. This one does not have any. I do feel like for my skin tone that this color can wash me out a little bit. So what I will usually do is go in and just define a little bit more with a lip liner. Do you see how that just sort of adds a little bit of depth on the outside corner as opposed to here. Now if you did that before you put the lipstick on, it's obviously going to really alter the color of the lipstick, but if you do it afterwards, it just adds that definition. So I do think that's a really pretty color for springtime. Like I said, the texture is really nice. The packaging is gorgeous. Out of the three products that I purchased, I would definitely recommend the lipstick first and foremost. I think it's super nice. The eyeshadow, it's okay. I mean, I don't think there's anything wrong with it. There's, there's decent pigmentation. I just don't necessarily love the color payoff that you get from these. The mascara is a definite pass for me. I just feel like I have so many other mascaras that I love that I just can't suffer through this. So I hope that was helpful for you guys to see all of those products in action, hear a little bit more about the range, and maybe you didn't even know that it existed yet. Maybe you're not like me and you don't stop at a Walgreens every two days to see what's new. But that's what I'm here for, to tell you guys about these exciting things. So definitely stop by your local Walgreens and check them out. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Be sure and click that box right there to watch my last video. Follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter to talk about all things glamour. Talk to you guys later, bye.